Hi, right, I'm Michael. Hi, Dash. And uh, we're back with another game. So today's game is a kind of oldie but a goodie. It's called the Paddock game. Paddock. All, paddock, yeah. All you need to play is uh, a piece of grid paper for each player. So I've just printed these straight from my computer. I mean, if you've got students who've got a grid maths book, um, but otherwise you can print them off the internet. And then each player needs a colour. We've got a texture and a pencil for that colour, but you can get away with just having whatever. Um, and uh, we're using two 10-sided dice that go from one to 10. And we'll talk about a different equipment you could use if you don't have that at home. Okay, so the aim of the game, Nash, is we're gonna put a timer on, and the aim of the game is to have the most of your sheet colored in compared to mine. Okay. Okay, so I'll go first. So whatever you roll, you're gonna color, oh, that's a good one, you're gonna color that in. So I've got an eight and a 10, so I'm gonna color in, Nash, eight times 10. Eight groups of 10. Now, do you know what eight groups of 10 is while I do this? Can you work it out? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I don't know what eight, eight times two, ten. One, two, three, four, five, oh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eighty. Eighty, okay, well we can check that. Hold on. Alright, Nashi. So each line is ten, right? So ten. Twenty, and in the middle, I'm going to write my equation. 8 times 10 equals 80. And then I'm going to colour with my pencil. And you don't have to do solid colouring, Nash, just, just so we can see some green. We don't want to spend ages doing the colouring. So that is my first turn. And you can pick up the dice and you can roll and have your turn, Nash. That's 8 times 6. 8 times 6. You're not going to know what that is, that's okay. So why don't we just, why don't you just draw the rectangle down and we can work it out. How do I draw the rectangle? So eight groups of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then what would you need to do down the side? Six. No, no, because we want eight. Eight. Yeah. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. Okay, and now can you join it up to make it a rectangle? Now while Nash is doing that, I'll just say that this is probably not a game that's pitched at his level. So this should be pitched at sort of year two, probably really year three, year four, and year five. Beautiful. And so if you write six times eight in there, Nash. Six times eight. And in this instance, I'm just going to tell Nash the answer. So this is 48, Nash. Six groups of eight are 48. You could do this. Look, you could do equals and do 48 on the next line. Eight, eight. Okay. Okay, so as I said, if you're at school, you'll probably have the 1 to 10 dice. You may not. If you're at home, it's probably very unlikely that you've got them. So a really good substitute is just a deck of cards. So next term, we'll just play with a deck of cards, showing how you can use cards. So I've taken out all of the picture cards, so it just goes ace to 10. 1 and 9, so 1 times 9. Now I've got a bit of a decision to make, Nash, because I've got to work out where to put this one group of 9. I am going to put my 1 times 9 down here. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Wow, that's just a long row. It is just a long row. 1 times 9 equals 9. And I colour, 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 colour. Alright, and that goes in the discard pile. So, Nessie, do you want to have a turn with the cards? No, that's the dice. Okay, use the dice then. Nine, nine times six. So now I have to draw nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. 
Can I just check that down there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good job. And then six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, as Nash is doing that, just to highlight, so obviously there's some strategy, there's a degree of luck in what you roll, but there's also some strategy in terms yeah. of where you put the different parts of your paddock. And I, I'm a big believer philosophically of when you're, so pull the fill in your equation, darling, while I'm talking. I'm a big believer in rather than telling the, pe the, the player the strategy, the best way for them to find out is by playing. So, calls, you could, what does it take? nine times six. Uh, what would 10 groups of 6 be? 10 groups of 60. So what would, if 10 groups of 6 is 60, what would 9 groups of 6 be? Uh, 59? 59? No, so if 10 groups of 60, we're going to take off one group of 6. One group, okay. So if 60 take away one group of 6. 60 take away 6. Because... It was 54. Yeah, good point. And you can just shade it in. So I'm a big believer in the best way to figure out the strategy of a game is by playing and doing it. Now she's shade it in with that as well. Okay. And I think that you can look at his board and see that there's probably a bit of a strategic error, but that's fine. He'll discover that the more he plays the game. All right, Mike, so Nash, I'm going to roll where your colour in. And we're going to set the timer now for 20 minutes. So at the end of 20 minutes, whoever's got the fewest blank squares on their board is going to be the winner. And that's just arbitrary. You can just decide yourself what time you want to set the timer on, okay? Okay, so Nash, is, we've just come back. We've obviously jumped ahead in the game. You can see there's been a bit of progress in our boards. Um, now, we've jumped back in because something interesting's happened. So Nash, you just rolled an... I took and? 10. Now, do you know what that is? Okay, so you know what that is? That's 80, that's great. All right, now, where are you going to put it on the board? This is the biggest box. Okay, will it fit there? One, two, three, four, five. No, only at five, Okay, so it won't fit there. So in that case, what happens is Nash misses his turn. Right. Now, there is a different version of the game you can play whereby you can split that. So you could do like four groups of ten here and four groups of ten there, but we're not playing those rules today. So, Nash, you miss a turn. Now, Nash, I want to ask you something. If you look at your board and you look at Dad's board, do they look similar or do they look a bit different? They look different. So, can you tell me what do you think is different about them? Yeah, it's all that space up. Huh? Yeah. And there's got a whole bunch of space here. So, I've got a whole big bunch of space here with just a little bit in there. What have you got on your board? Only little bits here. Okay, so what's going to happen now? What sort of numbers do you need to roll? Little, 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 yeah. little. Yeah, okay. Little All right, so we're going to keep going. It's my turn. Three times four. One, two, that'll fit nicely in there, Nash. So one, two, three, four. So three groups of four. What does that equal, Nash? Okay, so there's the timer as well, which is great. So now she, that's now the end of the game. So now what we need to do to work out the winner is we would need to count up our white squares. So even this involves a bit of multiplicative thinking because I could count them by ones, but if we have a look at my board here, I mean, the other option what I could do is I could work out how many are in this row and then work out and do some multiplicity of thinking to work it out. But we won't bore you with counting our boards. We'll do that and then we'll come back and have a chat to you. So now, all right, so we've finished working out our totals. So Nash, uh, I had 128 white squares still to be colored in. And Nash, how many did you have? 156. And that means that I'm the winner because the aim is to have less white squares to color in. Now, as I alluded to before, Nash was counting them one by one. It was taking a long time, wasn't it? Whereas when I did mine, I was using my knowledge of multiplication. So I worked out there was 15 there, so I knew four rows of 15 was 60. So even working out that part there, you can be asking the students to be thinking multiplicatively. 
So that's the panic game. It's a really good game. One of the things that's one of the strong points of the game is that you're constantly getting that visual representation of what these equations look like. So what's three times eight look like? It also deals with commutativity, so the idea that three times eight or eight times three can be used flexibly and thinking about where does it fit best on the board. Um, so a really good game for uh, building multiplicative thinking and developing students' knowledge of multiplication. So thanks a lot for watching and hopefully we'll film another game soon and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.